Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, aka The Spider Menace, that's here to bring you a full breakdown of the new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. The second teaser is filled to the brim with easter eggs, big reveals and some major hints towards what's happening in the film. I also want to give a reaction to the new look and discuss some plot leaks on the film, but obviously I'll talk about that at the end of the video in case you want to avoid some of the major spoilers. That being said, there will be some of the more minor ones in the first part of the video, so if you've managed to avoid some of the biggest reveals on the web and don't want things ruined, then I recommend that you swing out of here. Without the way, there's no way back from this point onwards. Now let's get into our No Way Home trailer breakdown. Okay, so the first trailer for the movie very much tackled the opening act of the film. It pretty much showed the ramifications of Peter's name being revealed, how it changed his life, his attempts to reverse things with the help of Doctor Strange, and how this ultimately backfired and brought across several characters from the multiverse. Now as for this trailer, it leans heavily into the villains, gives some of their motivations and character beats, and it also reveals their incredible costumes before ending on a big tease. However, we start off with shots that pick up right after the end of Far From Home, and these include ones that were shown in the first teaser, namely the public enemy billboard. This imagery of a half Peter half Spider-Man has been used several times in the comics in order to display his spider sense, and it was also shown on the front cover of the Daily Bugle when reporting his identity reveal. Peter also says that he's only had one week where his life felt normal since he got bit by the radioactive spider, and this is when MJ found out who he was. I think the movie is very much going to tackle MJ also forgetting his identity too, and he'll have to decide whether to bring her back into the fold as she's clearly being put in a lot of danger. This happens not only at the start of the trailer when they have to jump off the bridge, but also when they swing through the subway, and she falls off the Statue of Liberty at the end of the teaser. Now we see Strange saying that the MCU got some visitors when Peter botched the spell, but it, it was you mate to be fair, you botched this spell. Now in to go with this are images of the pumpkin bomb before we're introduced to our first big bad. This is the Green Goblin who's back in his classic costume from the first Spider-Man movie and he's being reprised once more by Willem Dafoe. I always thought that it kind of sucked that the Raimi movies killed off so many of the villains as it would have been brilliant to see Osborne appear throughout the entire trilogy. I know that Harry hallucinated seeing him in the other movies, but because of the impact he left on the first film, it just felt like something was missing. Though everyone loves Doc Ock, for me, Defoe is the biggest villain for the film, and from what I've heard, he's going to be the main bad guy in it. There's a lot of leaks going around on the movie, and from what I've been told, his costume will go through several changes in it. Firstly, when the villains arrive, he'll be in his classic one from the Raimi verse that we saw on the poster. This will get damaged, and he'll end up losing the helmet. From this point out, he'll lie low and pretend to be a homeless person, and he'll also wear a poncho. Is, is it a poncho? Anyway, he'll then travel to Feast, which, as we know from Far From Home, is run by Aunt May. Here, he'll encounter Peter, and he'll tell him about the villains dying if they go home, which will set off a chain of events that leads to Peter freeing them. I'll talk about this more later on in the plot leaks part of the video, but Goblin will also get drones, and he'll wear goggles for his final look, which I'm sure you've seen if you've been following the channel, which you bloody should have. Now as for the black suit, it's been confirmed now that this will actually just be the red and black suit turned inside out. If you saw some of the shots from the leaked alternate trailer, you'll have known for a while now that this happens because Peter gets green paint thrown on him by a Mysterio supporter. Yesterday, big screen leaks revealed that the magic webs we've seen in the toys will also be given to him by Strange, and these will have the power to send the villains back to the prison just below the Sanctorum. That's a really good idea, and it makes sense as to why he'd use these. Now it's also possible that he keeps some of the nanotech and this is how he makes the integrated suit which looks like a cross between the black one and the iron spider. From this point we get some extended looks at the bridge scene, namely Ock fighting Peter after he likely just jumped off the car that he suited up on. This is an awesome action scene and Peter even uses double webs as he runs away. Go on run you coward. Now Doc Ock was heavily revealed in the first trailer and he was pretty much a thing they closed out on to blow everyone's mind. The bridge scene actually takes place at the Hudson River, which is where the character was killed in the Raimi movie, so it's a nice little callback to that. Now though in the first trailer he seemed like quite a threatening presence, it seems like he's actually trying to reason with Peter in this one, which makes me think that he's not a completely malevolent force. If you pay close attention to the differences between this new look and the last one, you might also notice that the villain's tentacles have changed slightly. This was shown in the Empire magazine photos and images, and we saw as the tentacles went from their normal look when 
Tony was squeezing Peter's head to having red and gold lace throughout them. I actually have a theory that when Doc Ock holds Peter in the air that the tentacles will absorb the nanotech in his suit and that this then will be overtaken by the tentacle AI. This would explain why Peter doesn't really seem to be using the integrated suit that much beyond the bridge moment and if you look at the trailer and images, he's kind of swapping between the red and black one and also the black one. So I think the nanotech will be absorbed into Ock's tentacles and he'll then go back to his other version. He also unmasks Peter in the trailer and is confused as to why he's not the Tobey Maguire version. When the trailer first released, a lot of people theorised that the person he was saying hello Peter to was actually Toby, but I think this confirms that it was indeed just Holland's version. Now there are a lot of teasers towards them showing up, but we'll talk about that later on towards the end of the video. Now just as he has him on the wall, you can also see in slow motion that the nanotech quickly covers Peter's chest and it looks like there's less here, potentially tying into that theory about the nanotech being on his tentacles. There's more shots of Peter avoiding him and we also get a fun bit in which they laugh about how his name is Dr. Octopus whilst he stands imprisoned. The de-aging on Melina is fantastic and you might also notice that MJ, Ned and Peter are all in the clothes that they had on in the first look images. In that we watched as they snuck down to the basement and this joking moment in the sanctorum is a nice juxtaposition between the fight on the bridge. Now I think this moment on the bridge is based loosely on the happy birthday storyline. In the graphic novel, we open with Dormammu attacking Times Square in the middle of New York. Strange went to cast a spell to send him back to the void, but Peter interrupted this and it caused the multiverse to rip open. In the terror of reality, he encountered two versions of himself, namely a one from his past and a one from his future. Peter realised that he could actually affect the realities and slightly change things, potentially even stopping himself from becoming Spider-Man. The book ended with him fighting lots of different villains from across the multiverse, which this movie is of course also doing. This raged across New York City and it included all of the villains that we've seen in the teasers. Strange managed to restore reality and with it being Peter's birthday, we ended with him giving a present which brought forth the spirit of Uncle Ben. Ben said he was really happy with him and also how he'd handled his great power and responsibilities. Though I don't know if this will be in the movie, I think it would be awesome to see Uncle Ben and if they got a big actor to play the part, it would really end the film on a high note. Now accompanying this bridge scene is a quick shot of the Statue of Liberty which has a Captain America shield. This is highly rumoured to be where the final showdown is and on it you can catch not only a storm cloud indicating Electro but also the shield at the top and a sign for the statue just below it. I put a yellow arrow in so you can see because I know you miss it you idiot. Now later on in the trailer we get a shot in which Peter stands on top of the statue's head and you can also catch him holding the cube as well. There's also a blast on it similar to the spell and my guess is that this is the warning that Strange gives at the end when he says more people are coming through. Either way, there's lots of moments of this scene in the trailer, namely the statue falling apart and Peter jumping after Gwen. Sorry, MJ, MJ. Now we also catch Peter at a power station and I'm guessing that this is where the showdown with Electro is. Peter is put in charge of getting the villains back and he has to Scooby do this crap. We also see the opposite side of the image from the first look and can confirm that it is indeed strange at the top of the stairs. MJ rightly points out that this is all kind of his mess, which yeah, you, it's just right, you botched this spell, you moron. Like the thumbs up button if you think Strange botched the spell. Now we get some continued looks of the Sandman fight and then also a look at someone reporting on it, aka J. Jonah Jameson. You can see that he's brought with him a Daily Bugle van. It's nice to see him actually reporting on stuff instead of just being the editor that he was in the comics. Now the trailer very much gives us a reason as to why Peter and Doctor Strange end up going head to head. We very much learn that if the villains are sent back to their home worlds, they'll be killed and that's why, dun dun dun, there's no way home or off that bridge. Now in their own realities, the Spider-Men of their universes were responsible for their deaths and this is why Peter feels guilty. The only villain who wasn't killed originally was Sandman, but from what I've been told on the movie, we will end up learning what happened after the events of Spider-Man 3. Sandman apparently says that Peter forgave him, but Strange will inform us that they crossed paths years later and he was killed during that fight. Take that with a pinch of salt, but it makes sense as to why Sandman is wrestling with being good and bad. The first trailer did show him stopping an electro blast and you could catch what looked like the pair fighting, so that just makes a lot of sense. I love how the villains are just really fighting for their survival and that added humanity we get in this new look is great and it just really helps to flesh out why Peter is desperate to save them. There's also a giant sand fist and this is of course very reminiscent of the comics in which Sandman would often use that as his main attack. 
Now in the first trailer, we got a good look at the magical cube, and in this we learn more about how it's holding the villains in place at the Sanctorum prison. Peter will steal this and this will make Strange chase him across New York, and then into the mountains on the back of a train. I love how there's this real conflict between them, and Strange is of course obsessed with protecting reality, whereas Peter very much just wants to protect life. It's a great conflict between them, and throughout the fight we're gonna see things like the cape grabbing Peter and so on. Now we get a shot of Electro, and I absolutely love the upgrade that they've given to Jamie Foxx. From what I've been told, the character will warp into the MCU, and it'll be very reminiscent of the opening of a Terminator film in which the killer robot arrives. This will be at a power plant, which is where he'll steal an engineer's jacket, and then he'll get rid of this to don what we see in the trailer. The mask looks amazing, and it's very reminiscent of his look in the comics, but they've upgraded it to make it so that it's electricity that creates it, instead of it just being cloth. You might also notice that they've changed the colouring of his electricity from blue to yellow. This is more in line with the comics too, and it further brings things closer to the way that the live action characters are presented in the MCU. Now there's a lot more action shots, and we see the three villains, namely Sandman, Electro and the Lizard. The villain will once more be played by Reese Iffins, who I'm sure you know from the Amazing Spider-Man series. In that, Dr. Kurt Connors had lost his arm, and he was trying to use the healing factor of lizards in order to find a way to regenerate his limb. However, this backfired, and though it grew back, it turned him into a giant hulking lizard at the same time. Now what I love about Connors, and well most of the villains in this trailer, is that he's somewhat of a tragic character. I was absolutely obsessed with him in the 90s cartoon, as it just fascinated me watching his arm grow back, and then him changing to this hulking beast. Now there's a moment in which the three villains swing forward, and if you look closely, you'll see that the lizard gets hit by something, but it's been CGI'd out. I have no idea what this is, but if I had to hazard a guess, I'd say that it's Andrew Garfield, and they've just removed him for this first look. Very strange moment, but yeah, definitely something worth paying attention to. Now we get a moment in which MJ falls, and Peter jumps after her. Not only is this a slight callback to one of the illusions in Far From Home, but it's very reminiscent of the death of Gwen Stacy from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. That moment also pulled from the comics, in which the Green Goblin threw Gwen off the side of the Brooklyn Bridge. Peter caught her, but she died from either the impact of the fall, or because the breakneck speed of the web was literally breakneck. Not, not, good, not a good pun that. Anyway, he wrestled with the guilt over this for some time, and I love how this kind of hints towards the comic storyline and Garfield's films. It would be pretty wild if MJ died at this moment, and hopefully she survives the fall. Now Strange very much hints towards other people coming through the portal, and I think this will of course be Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. The trailer was very much about showcasing the villains, and I think that they would have teased other ones if it was someone like a Venom or so on. In the post credit scene of Let There Be Carnage, he was brought to the MCU, so we kinda already know that his entrance wasn't in this scene. So I'm really hoping that we get to see them all come together, but unfortunately this trailer doesn't end the debate of whether they're in the film or not, though it does definitely tease it. Now as I mentioned earlier, I think this might be happening when we see the blast come out from the Statue of Liberty, and that kind of ties into the portal opening up and then them coming across. Also, you'll probably notice that there's lots of scaffolding at the location, and not to go too far into what's been leaked, but yeah, Andrew Garfield is indeed the werewolf, because this is the exact same scene. Now I'm recording this at 1.30am in the morning, and I'm also about to head to Edinburgh in 6 hours just to take some time out, so I will be back with another video in the week to just talk about all the easter eggs that I missed in this one, because I'm sure there's a few. I've not had coffee guys, just let me be. I've tried to be as thorough as possible, but yeah, make sure you let me know in the comments below if there's anything I missed, and I'll be sure to cover it on the next video. Now for the next two parts of the video, I want to do my reaction first, and then we can get into more of the plot leaks. I thought I'd switch the order I normally do, as you might just want to hear my thoughts, but not any of the spoilers for the film. Anyway, I absolutely love the way that the movie is shaping up to be, and if they manage to stick the landing on this, then it could be one of the best comic book movies of all time. Spider-Man is one of the medium's most popular characters, and he's right up there next to Batman and Superman in terms of stature and legacy. The character has had a number of amazing films, and his rogues gallery is arguably one of the best as well. To have this all coming together for the movie makes it feel like an epic for a number of reasons. Director John Watts recently told Empire Magazine that this movie feels like Spider-Man Endgame, and it certainly comes across that way. I think it's going to be absolutely filled with easter eggs, and I can't wait to see what happens when the movie is released. They're really putting everything they can into it, and I think it's going to be one of the biggest movies of all time, 
even with the pandemic. People are just desperate to see it and Sony have actually made people hungry for it by holding off on the marketing because they know that if they keep some secrets then the hype is just going to be even higher. It's a great second trailer and the two of these together are absolutely amazing teasers for a film that I really can't wait to see. Now as hyped as I am, I have to keep a balanced head and I know that because of everything that's going on in this movie that there is a chance it's going to suck. They really have to deal with the cliffhanger from Far From Home, introduce the new villains, characters and also have a great story too so it doesn't feel like we're just watching fight scene after fight scene with the villains of yesteryear. It's going to be difficult but Marvel have shown us time and time again that they're up to the challenge and I can't wait to see it when this movie releases. Now that takes us onto the leaks part of the video and full spoilers ahead from this point onwards. Leaks like this should be taken with a pinch of salt but some stuff does seem to be what happens in the two trailers so just know that I won't be casting a spell to make you forget if you go past this point. It's your own bloody fault, you should have stopped the video you moron. Now the opening of, sorry about that, now the opening of the movie is pretty much what we've seen in the teasers with Peter being bombarded in New York after the end of Far From Home. He then swings through the city with MJ as it's plastered everywhere that he's public enemy number one. Peter escapes and ends up handing himself in which is when Matt goes to his defence and gets him off. Mysterio's story doesn't really hold up in court and though Peter's name is cleared it doesn't mean he has an easy life. Everyone knows his name at this point and there's still some that believe Mysterio because a fake news wouldn't be published as much as it is if people weren't willing to still believe it. Thus he goes to Doctor Strange who casts a spell to make the world forget. Peter interrupts this and it then breaks the multiverse open which is when the villains from across the multiverse come into the MCU. These include Doc Ock, the Green Goblin, Sandman, Electro and the Lizard. It's a real Doctor Shocktopus and they start to attack New York which is when we get the bridge scene. During this time Norman Osborn decides to lay low and the other villains go wild. Strange and Peter manage to capture them and they put them in a prison below the Sanctum Sanctorum. Strange wants to send them back to their homeworlds but he has to figure out first where they are and how to do this. Norman then visits them and they all recall their deaths which Spider-Man was present at. Osborn realises that he needs the villains in order to carry out his plan but Strange's magic is too strong so he goes to Peter in the guise of an ally. He says that because they all died on their worlds that sending them back would be a death sentence and he also blames the Peter of their universes for their demise. Peter knows what it's like to be wiped from existence because of the snap and he doesn't want to put anyone else through that. This guilts Peter into stealing a magical cube from Strange that frees the villains and allows them all to escape. This is when Strange chases Peter through the mirror dimension and we see New York collapsing around them. Strange finally captures him but it's too late and thus they've got to stop Osborn before he carries out his plan. Now I have heard that the villains in the movie, namely the ones who turned good, actually now have a chip in their head that controls them to some extent. This may be developed from the AI tech in Doc's tentacles but that is just me guessing. However, Sandman doesn't have this because he's basically sand and as we know, sand, it just gets everywhere. This is why we saw him helping Peter in the trailer against Electro and you know the guy, he's not, he's not that bad, he just killed Uncle Ben for his daughter so let the guy off. Now there's also some big blowout battles and Osborn ends up creating a giant arc reactor that he positions over the Statue of Liberty. This has a Captain America shield on it and it makes for an amazing set piece. Unfortunately from what I've heard Aunt May dies during the movie and we close out with the film feeling very tragic. According to leaks on the film the post credit scene contains Tom Hardy's Venom and then as we head into his third film that will kind of be where his story picks up from. Now apparently there have been multiple endings filmed similar to Endgame and this is to stop the spectacular spoiler man himself Tom Holland from letting things slip. We will see when the movie releases just how true these leaks are but if you've been following the channel for a while now you'll know most stuff is pretty much 50-50 and even when the leaks are very close to what's in the final thing there are still some aspects that are wrong. Either way I'm guessing that this is the last big trailer we'll get and that the next looks will be mostly made above TV spots and the odd new bit of footage. Hopefully though you enjoyed the video and of course let me know your thoughts below on what you want to see when the movie releases. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out one of our breakdowns linked on screen right now. Might be better, probably worse let's be honest but I hope to see you over there after this. If not then thanks for sitting through this video, I've been Paul, you've been the best and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Take care, peace.